Witches have a distinct advantage when it comes to self-development, record-keeping, and legacy-building in the form of our Book of Shadows. The only problem is many of us never seize this advantage. So today I'm going to continue my thoughts on journaling and its uses by taking a look at how it can add a personal element to the Book of Shadows. Hello everyone, I'm Witch Hazel and in today's video I'm going to chat a bit about why I think a Book of Shadows should contain a journaling element. In order to understand why a journal element in our Book of Shadows might be useful, we have to first understand what a Book of Shadows is. Essentially, a Book of Shadows is the traditional means of retaining the information we learn in our craft. Traditional covens will always have a book containing the rituals, practices, and tenets of the coven, um, which new members draw from when creating their own books. Solitary witches do the same by collecting resources and transferring the information into their personal books. Depending on your personal beliefs and preferences, you may also include spell work and personal ob observances, which relate only to you. Some witches like to keep this information in a separate book. Either way, we are viewing the book as a repository for information, uh, information learned over time. When I began this channel back in 2015 or so, my sole purpose was recording information and pearls of wisdom for my niece. I created videos because I had a poor track record with writing in my Book of Shadows. In a sense, this channel is a visual Book of Shadows. I hear a lot of witches with, the, with a similar story, though. They, they want their book to be an heirloom a thing of beauty and wisdom passed down through the generations um, and added to. Unfortunately, the gravity of that assignment tends to lead us to never contribute to our books of, out of fear of making a mistake. This issue is a whole other video that I accidentally already prepared, so you'll get more on that, uh, that theme soon. But for this video, the important thing to remember is this idea of a legacy. If we view our Book of Shadows as a legacy, then I'm afraid some of us are missing an important part of it, including me. Sure, we're leaving behind a great collection of information, but think about what we're, what we're looking for when we collect this information. I don't know about you, but I don't really care about a spell or story or history unless I can relate to it somehow, find a little bit of myself in it. If my nieces inherit my book of shadows, am I going to be satisfied with just copying out some interesting rituals? Or do I really want them to find that little piece of me which lives in them? If you're creating your Book of Shadows with posterity in mind, what is it you're hoping your descendants will find in it? If you're not creating your book for future generations and you only want a reference, are, it, are you sure it will be something worthwhile to keep coming back to if you can't find some spark of yourself in it? You might be able to copy out information and add a hint of yourself by making some customizations and tweaks, but this doesn't necessarily allow your voice to come through. If you have any desire to use your Book of Shadows as more of a communication tool for future generations, it's my opinion that a more personal aspect needs to be included which is where journaling comes in. 
I'm sure you can already envision this idea. The concept isn't hard. However, it brings up another conundrum. A journal is very often a disorganized stream of consciousness tool meant to be messy. It's also extremely personal in most cases. We might not want to share everything that goes into a journal in our book of shadows. In which case, attempting to do so will completely counteract what we are trying to set up in our book, right? So how can we add this in among our carefully curated rituals and spells without it ruining the aesthetic? By reviewing our journal entries in exactly the same way we review ritual and spell information before deciding to include it in our books. Go through a curation process. If we go back to our definition of a book of shadows, it is generally the end result of trial and error. We copy down for reference only those things we know work for us. We discard, we discard the rest. Our journals are a place for working through thoughts and emotions, but it's not necessary to transcribe the process, just the end result. The wisdom we gain at the end. In my old book of shadow, Shadows flip through, I gave an example of this. I created a crystal grid for my grandfather and included in the notes some of the background information about what was going on at the time and how I felt. These are the things that influenced the construction of the grid, so it might be worthwhile for whoever is reading it later to know. In order to be effective, spells and rituals often need to be adjusted to match the circumstances of the moment. So having this reference will help the next person think about how their situation is similar or different and know where to make changes, hopefully. <laughs> In the end, of course, it's up to you. In my search for a way to inspire and motivate myself to regularly contribute to my Book of Shadows, I've decided that a journal element is useful. It's my intention to spend the coming year testing out this idea and seeing if I really will be more consistent by incorporating this feature. There is one more consideration which I think might be an obstacle for me, but I will be discussing that in an upcoming video. So for right now, um, I'd like to hear your thoughts on this topic. How many of you incorporate journaling into your book of shadows? If you do, how do you, do, how do you go about it? Um, if you don't, have you or would you consider, ha, consider it? Um, let me know, let me know in the comments. I always enjoy the inspiration you all provide for me. With that, I will let you get back to your crafting, but we will chat again soon. Until next time, everyone, blessed be.